the, the fourth quarter will be better than what the market's forecasting. And for next year, uh, we also think that, uh, that our growth is better than, than the forecast. Uh, it obviously all depends on a lot of external factors and uh, internal factors related to the way the, the economic agents see our program, the credibility that we can generate, and the way uh, we interact, uh, these variables interact. Governor Campos Neto, based on what you just said, based on what you can see now, two-thirds of the way through the third quarter, and based on your expectation that the fourth quarter is going to be, as you said, I think, slightly better than what the market expects, what would you anticipate at this moment the full-year decline for 2020 will be in GDP? It's going to be around minus 5%, with next year growing a little bit more than 4%. So in both cases, if I'm not mistaken, that is better than what, well, as you pointed out, some private economists see GDP dropping by less than 5%, but growth in excess of 4% uh, is, would be substantial for 2021, particularly considering where the economy was in the second quarter. Yes, you have two groups of people. You have one group of people who is revising better the growth this year, but is shaving uh, off the, the growth of next year because they think the stimulus is stronger this year, but there's going to be this headwind once the stimulus uh, phases out. And there's another group of people that says, no, uh, what I'm seeing is a strong recovery. I think that uh, this, the, the, the assumptions that I had in terms of uh, uh, the economy stalling due to the pandemic, the reactions being better, and so they're updating uh, this year better without changing next year. So we have these two groups of people today. amount of public spending. Um, like many countries, Brazil has been handing out cash uh, during the pandemic to support the economy and to help families. Earlier this week, that stipend, the monthly stipend, was cut uh, in half to 300 reais, about $55 from 600. What impact is that going to have on the pace of the recovery? It, I think it's important to um, quantify the overall uh, group of measures that were taken to face the pandemic. When you look at what uh, the other uh, countries are doing, you can basically divide in five parts. Monetary policy, which Brazil did aggressively, moving interest rates from four and a half to two. Um, liquidity and capital measures, which we also did aggressively. Liquidity uh, measures amount to 16.7% of GDP. Capital measures amount to 17.5% of GDP. Uh, so those, those are the two groups. Then you have taxes, which is either delaying uh, or canceling taxes. Then you have the direct transfers, and then you have the credit lines. When you look at direct transfers, Brazil did a huge program of direct transfers based on the, poor, on, on, on the, on the lower uh, uh, part of the population, on the poor population, on the people who needed the most. And also, we had a bunch of uh, credit programs that are in place right now. Uh, some of them took a little bit longer than we expected, but all of them are in place right now. And we actually had some that started this week. When I look at the amount of money that was done, that was transferred directly, plus all the credit programs, I see an impulse that is strong enough to take us to the first, uh, between January and February of next year. So yes, there is always a time decay from the, from the fiscal expenditures that will, will, will tend uh, to phase out, and we, and we needed to phase out because it was impossible for Brazil to keep paying 600 reais to everybody every month, uh, because then it would get into another uh, dimension, uh, which would be more problematic, which is a lack of credibility in the fiscal front. So I think Brazil did what it could, 